a real reaction to real events. As a pastor, I've had a number of people share their grief with me. Nothing is more heartbreaking than the loss of a loved one. It's so final, the, the loneliness is so suffocating, the pain so unrelenting. But several of the people who've shared their grief with me have gone on to share something that happened to them that, that was a tremendous source of comfort. They, they've talked about how in the immediate aftermath, the immediate wake of their loved one's death, they had a powerful sense, a powerful experience of their loved one's presence. Many other people have talked about signs they received from their loved one assuring them that they're in heaven. The most gut-wrenching of these stories that I heard was a, a teenager I knew whose father died very unexpectedly, very, very quickly. It was a complete shock. The night of his death, after he had died, she went up to her room and as tears were streaming down her face, she was overwhelmed with grief. She swears that he came to her in her room. She could feel his presence. In fact, he spoke in what she heard as audible words, telling her that he was okay, that he was in heaven, and that he was gonna watch over her for the rest of her life. That loss was so crushing to her, and the experience so comforting, I so wanted to believe it was real. But being skeptical by nature, I, I can't help but wonder if these signs and powerful experiences are anything more than a figment of our imagination, w ways to cope with a, a grief that would be too overwhelming to cope with otherwise. A real reaction to real events. The past two weeks, I've been showing how the disciples' initial reaction to the empty tomb and the embodied appearances of Jesus, their doubt, gives us a really good reason to believe that they're describing real events. These are very likely real events. When confronted with them, the, the disciples are overcome with joy. They don't fall to their knees confessing Jesus as their risen Lord. Scandalously, they don't think he's risen from the dead. In fact, they're adamant that he can't be. And as I demonstrated, this is a really good reason to trust what these stories are telling us, to trust that they're historically credible, to trust that they're very likely real events, describing real events. The disciples did discover the tomb Jesus had been buried in empty three days after his crucifixion. Jesus did appear to them in a shockingly tangible way, a real reaction to real events. But there's one more piece to this puzzle. It's the striking corroboration the disciples' doubt provides us. Consider this example for a second. Imagine that several of your coworkers from, from a, a, another booth claim that they saw you eating lunch at a local diner. That would be a good reason to think that you were actually there, but they could have been mistaken. Maybe it was somebody who just looked like you. Similarly, um, uh, imagine that cell phone records show that you were at that uh, local diner eating lunch. That would be a good reason to think that you were there, but that could be inaccurate. Maybe somebody stole your cell phone. However, when you put those two facts together, they corroborate each other in a way that virtually eliminates any mistaken identity. The cell phone records corroborate what your friends, your coworkers, claim to have seen. In fact, the only way it couldn't be you is if the person who stole your cell phone looked exactly like you, they were your twin, which is extremely unlikely. In the same way, the disciples' initial reaction to the empty tomb corroborates their initial reaction to the embodied appearances of Jesus and vice versa. They're shocked when they discover the tomb Jesus was buried in empty and they, they conclude that somebody else must have moved him. Then when they think that they're seeing this same Jesus, the, the, the same body that had been buried in the tomb, when they're seeing that same body appear to them uh, not too long afterwards, they refuse to believe their eyes. A real body is missing from the tomb. Seeing that same real body appearing to them is what so bewilders these disciples. A real reaction to real events. So why does any of this matter? Knowing there's a heaven, knowing that we one day can be reunited with our loved ones is the most comforting thought imaginable. Powerful experiences and signs might reveal that this is true, but they might also simply be desperate projections of a grief-stricken imagination. However, the initial reaction of these disciples, their doubt in the face of Jesus' empty tomb and, and his embodied 
appearances is a good reason among many others, a good reason to think that his resurrection was a real event. It's solid evidence pointing to the fact that he conquered death. And this, this is solid evidence that there is a heaven. This is solid evidence that we can be reunited with our loved ones. So what do you make of these signs and and powerful experiences people have in the wake of their loved one's death? Do you think that they're real? Go to the Contact EJ page of the Raising Jesus website and let me know what you think. I'd love to hear from you. Also, please like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and keep telling your friends about us. I truly appreciate all the support you've been giving me. Thank you.